Good morning, ASDAG. Welcome to church. How are you doing? I am getting cabin fever for sure. Um, you know, this week has been uh, a harder week because I think it's uh, being in the house for a longer period of time. Um, I felt really happy this morning as I have to come to church to do the live stream. Never thought I'd be so excited to just drive into church, into the office building, uh, although I'm by myself, and now I have one other person, Kelly, with me, it was an exciting thing to get out of the house. I'm sure some of you are really struggling. And uh, hang in there, and the church is praying for you and behind you. So welcome. I'd like to make a few announcements before I start. A reminder that some of you may have already seen, there's a bi-weekly devotional that will be up on our Facebook page every Tuesday and every Thursday. And I've scheduled it to be up there at 7 a.m. I don't know what time you wake up, but I think that's a good time for those of you who generally wake up early or have to log in for your work online. Uh, I've made it available every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 o'clock. And so join me for the bi-weekly devotional. Again, I'd like to share with you that I'm open to virtual visitation uh, every 2 to 5 o'clock every Tuesday to Friday afternoon. Virtual visitation means I will talk to you, pray for you, and even maybe if you would like to, share a little verse with you online uh, via Zoom, via Facebook chat, via FaceTime, via WhatsApp, or just a phone call or SMS. I will do whatever I can if you request it. So how do you request for a virtual visitation? You need to email to vv at sdeg.org.sg. Vv at sdeg.org.sg. You're going to let me know when you want it, which day, uh, what time of the day, and what is there any specific that you'd like me to, to do for you on, uh, during this virtual visitation. Each slot is 15 minutes, and if there's an opening, we can extend it, right? So if you would like me to visit you virtually, email to vv at sdeg.org.sg, or you can WhatsApp or SMS to 87545504. Again, that's our SDEC number. If you have not added that number to your contacts, you should do it now because not only will you be able to contact us, you'll be able to receive our WhatsApp broadcast update on what's going on in SDEC. So once again, the number is 87545504. And finally, I know some of you are having challenges getting masks. Um, the conference and the church ourselves have both procured some masks. I have some available, not a lot. But if you urgently need masks or you, you're running out and uh, your supply has not come yet, I am able to provide you with some to, to tie you till your own supply of masks come. I don't have a lot to share with the entire church, but I have enough to, to give to some of you. So if you're really, in, you're really in a need for, for masks, so uh, email me or text me at the number that I've mentioned, 870-754-5504. Just type the word masks, right, to text that, that to the, the number, and then we'll contact you to figure out how we can get some masks to you. We may mail it to you, or we may get somebody to just courier and drop it off in your mailbox. Uh, we won't be contacting you physically, don't worry. Uh, at the very most, we'll drop off at your door, ring the doorbell, and we'll run away, right? So if you need masks, text the word M-A-S-K-S, masks, to the number 8754 5504 and we'll try to get it to you. Don't worry. Right now, we'd like to go into a time of praise and worship to start off the Sabbath. I know being at home every day has kind of changed the Sabbath practice for a lot of us. You don't get up early, get ready. Uh, maybe some of you prepare potluck food in the morning and then you come to church and attend Sabbath school and worship and then we fellowship together over lunch. This is a time where we can't do that but we can still gather together online. Uh, this week, the song uh, is not by Lindsay. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Um, this week, a couple contacted me last week, and they actually, out of their own initiative, I didn't contact them, recorded today's song, and it was so appropriate that I think we should use it for today's morning's uh, worship. It's still, and it's sung by Angie, and on the guitar is Sydney. Let us go into a time of praise and worship.
Welcome back. I hope that the song brought you some comfort and reminded you about God's presence in your life, in the stillness that we can find in God in the midst of chaos, and that is where we are at. The news may bring worries to you, and you're worried about your family members, you're worried about those around you, you're worried about people who you don't really know, but you still, you still care about. Or you could be worried about families that are overseas and you, you can't contact them or you actually want to fly to be by their side but you cannot. Or you want to drive home to Malaysia with some, to meet some of these people and you can't. So trust that God is with them and trust that you can submit them to God. This morning for our prayer, I'd like to go back to what I did a few weeks ago. I would like you to comment in the Facebook page uh, some of your prayer requests. So to type just your prayer request there, and I will pray for those. Uh, I'm going to give you a bit of time, a couple of minutes, for all of you who are online and watching this. Type your prayer request into the comments section. Or if you feel uncomfortable, that you don't want everybody to know about who you are and what your prayer request is, you can WhatsApp to the number that I put up there just now, 8754 5504 and just WhatsApp your personal prayer request to me, and I'll pray for you uh, the specific request that you've sent in. I'll pray for those. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to send in your request, and I'm going to pray.
I'm going to give another minute for you to send me your request. Yes, uh, Padma, definitely that is a concern that all of us have, and I'll be praying for them. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Heavenly Father God, we thank you that we can still gather. We want to give thanks that we can stay at home. We thank you that we have masks to wear. But also thank you for family, for love, for stability in, in, in the midst of chaos that comes not from just simply good governance or good facilities or good environment, but we know that it comes from you, God. But at the, at the moment, we also like to pray for some who are not necessarily in such a, a good place. We pray for our brothers who are in the dorms. We have some that we've been in contact with. Uh, we thank you that they have not been affected by the virus, but still their living condition and their daily life is being affected because financially they are being impacted. We pray that, Lord, you will use your church to provide and tell us and grant us the wisdom to know what to do. And for the rest that we may have brushing contact with who in our previous visits have seen them but don't know them personally yet, and they may be suffering right now in the dorms from the virus itself, they are worried and they are, they are physically in pain. And Lord, Father, we pray for your Spirit to be mightily working amongst them. Lord, there are times where we recognize how human we are and how limited whatever we want to do can be. And at this time, we acknowledge that, God, we thank you, you are greater than us. That you go before us and go in front of us into the dorms around Singapore and be with those people who are suffering. Be with those people who are working with them and bring healing and comfort to them. Be with the caterers who are providing food to them. Be with the people who are just making sure that everything's running smoothly. Grant them your strength and your wisdom, your power and your healing. May your spirit dwell in them powerfully. God, we submit the whole of Singapore into your hand, and in fact, the world into your hand. This virus that's happening right now, Lord, though it's bad, we also see how that you're uniting humanity. So God, may you draw us closer to you and understand what our role to play in the midst of this pandemic. We love you, Jesus. May you help us to love you more. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Indeed, keep those brothers in prayer continuously. And now we'd like to go into a time of offering to give thanks to God for the blessing that He's bestowed upon us, even in times like this. You know, like a lot of friends from overseas have contacted me about how, how they appreciate that Singapore uh, have given some support to a, a lot of us. Um, and I say, yeah, of course, I really appreciate that. But you know, this week as I'm reading the news, what really excited me, brought hope to me was the number of people who say, you know, this solidarity fund that I've received, I don't need it. I'm going to donate it to those who need it. I don't know who needs it. Uh, maybe you're aware, but I know for sure there's a lot of people who are in need right now. Even within this church, there are people who are in need of support. In the offering, the church will try its best to seek the wisdom of God on how to use the fund. We're all under this pressure financially, but we trust that our God owns the, ca uh, the cattle on a thousand hills. The very fact that there is some money there is providence. And we trust that God will continue to provide to His church, which is not the building nor the institution, but all of us. Once again, I'd like to remind you that due to the extenuating uh, circumstance, uh, the pay now function on our online giving now will be dedicated solely and only to tithe giving. You can pay your offering, give your offering, your local church budget through the credit card or internet transfer me uh, method. But pay now, for now, because we're going to make it easy for people to return their tithe, will only be for tithe. And so you'll, you'll help us with processing the crazy thousands of uh, 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 requests and uh, uh, statements that comes in that the financial team have to do separately, individually at home now. So I'm going to give you some time as we go into a time of offering. May you give prayerfully. But I know that you actually don't need this time. They can give any time of the week. That is a, a blessing, I believe. But just for this moment, even if you're not giving online, uh, you can spend this time in thanking God in your personal prayer as an offering to Him. 
So scan the QR code to get to the giving page, or you can just go to adventistgiving.sg. Adventistgiving.sg. Welcome, church, to today's sharing. I don't know how many of you got really excited when you saw the title, Solidarity. Uh, I am not our Deputy Prime Minister, Heng Sui Kit. I cannot give you uh, any more than he has already given. But on a side note, I do want you to know, for those of you who are struggling and in need, that the conference have come along to partner the local church uh, in actually trying to support some of you. So if you really are in financial difficulty, you've lost your job, your income has dropped by 70%, contact me and I will try my best to work something out. We don't have a lot, as you can understand, because normally on a Sabbath, that's where we really collect the offerings. But now we can't do that anymore and it has dropped significantly. But we're still trying to give back because this money is not for us. This money has been given to the church to use to bless the church. And so we want to bless you. So the local church is partnering with the conference to try and support some of you in doing that. So if you have a need, email me directly, WhatsApp me, and I will try to do my best. We can't do a lot, but we'll do whatever we can. So contact me if you are in need. But together, we will get through this. I don't know. I can't prophesy. I don't have that gift to tell you how long this is going to last. But as long as we're walking in this difficult time, we'll walk together in solidarity. Today, I'm not only going to talk about solidarity, but I'm going to talk about how we can thrive in times like this. You know, uh, a few days ago, uh, I went out and did an essential thing. The government is saying, only go out of the house if it's essential. And so I tried to stay at home as much as I can, but my house was running out of food. I had to go and carry out the, the, the burden that's on my shoulder to go to the grocery store. And I wouldn't promote them, but it was very a very interesting experience. You know, I went to this grocery store, this supermarket, and you know, I was all decked out. I wore my mask, you know, my glasses always on. I wore a cap, you know, I was like, don't touch me. And, and I drove there, and I, as I walked into the supermarket, the, the weird thing, you know, I usually do the shopping with my wife. Um, this time, I have to do it alone because that's what is the best. As I walked in, I've never seen this scene before, but I actually saw joy. I saw happiness among the shoppers. And I understood because it's like, man, this is such a, the only like good enough reason for us to leave the house. And so these were people husbands, a lot of them, who I don't think usually do shopping uh, at the supermarket, they were going around the aisle with a subtle smile. I can't see, but the, behind the mask, but you know, you can see like, from the eyes that people are happy, and they were happy, and they were excited, uh, trying to look at stuff along the, the, the aisle. And it was an interesting experience. It tells us how much we have lost in this pandemic, that the freedom that we can go out and it's how challenging it is for everyone to, to go through this period of time. And so as a few of us were there, uh, we're trying to keep social distancing, one meter, we're trying to be extra polite. We're like, you go ahead, no problem. I wouldn't like try to rush in before you in case I, I rub against your shoulder. But this whole, whole scenario was just amazing. We, as human beings, desire connection. We desire relationship. And these experiences tell me how real that is, you know, how much that we yearn for a relationship with one another. Human beings uh, have been showing very different things just because of this current climate. I was looking around the world and there are things that we see that's amazing. Even one of our very own... Uh, Jazz, uh, while she was in uh, the, the, the stay-home notice at, at the hotel in Sentosa, she went onto her balcony and played a beautiful piece of home, and then she won a new newspaper, became viral. 
And of course, there's after the other uncle that I have to give credit, the, 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 the flute uncle. And then we see that happening all over the world where people are going out and they're on the, on the balcony entertaining one another. In fact, this week, I just saw another household in the HDB just performing from his balcony so people could watch and listen in and have a, a live concert. You know, we want to connect. In fact, there are some uncles who I know is wrong. I think they're desperate. They, you know, they, how they seal up the chairs and, uh, to, to make sure that you don't gather. <laughs> I saw this uncle who just, who just lived in my block. And this morning, I just, in fact, I was all coming to church. He brought his own chair and he was just sitting there. And as I walked past him, I said, Uncle, you know, you can't really do this. He says, for a little while, for a little while. We yearn relationship. We yearn connection. Have you ever wondered why? You know, my friend's an introvert. He's a, he is a self-proclaimed geek. And I was chatting with him online, and I'm like, bro, this is your time. You've been training your whole lifetime for this. And he says, bro, not really, not really. An introvert chooses to stay at home, but when he's asked and forced to stay at home, his spirit doesn't enjoy it. It's interesting. Even an introvert can not want to stay at home in his confinement, that he too, despite his tendencies and, and nature still wants connection, still wants to relate to others. You know, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 10, if you would turn with me to Isaiah 54, verse 10, or you can just look at the screen, Isaiah 54, verse 10 describes our God as this, For the mountain may depart, and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you. And my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. You know what this verse is telling us? It's not only telling us about the faithfulness, the goodness of our God. It's telling us about a God who is relational. Our God is relational. He is by Him in Himself a, per, a being who wants connection. And out of that being of who He is, he created human beings. And so God is relational, and that relational created relational creatures. That's why we are all relational. That's why we all desire connection. If we cut ourselves off from one another, we naturally wither and die. It is difficult. It is hard. So do not cut yourself off. As much as you think you'll be okay, as much as you think that you don't need relationship, you do. You do. You need relationship because you're created to be relational. You are created to be relational to God and relational to other fellow beings. In fact, you're created in relation to the animals. It's, it's no wonder that there are zoos in the world. Like, why would people want to just go spend a day looking at animals? Because we are relational. We're created to want to relate to the animals. Why do we go on hikes? Why do we go trekking? Why do we go into the nature? Because we are created relational. Relational to nature, to the plants, to the waterfalls, to the little ravine, and to the water that's around us, to the mountain that's in front of us. Although we don't have mountains in Singapore, except for Bukit Timah. But, you know, we are created to want to relate, not just to human beings, to God, but to everything that's around us. You know, it's an amazing thing when people go stargazing. Star Gazing is an amazing experience. You know, you look at the star and you just see how vast and bright and amazing uni the universe is. Of course, in Singapore, because of light pollution, it's very hard to see it. But, uh, you know, in Australia, where it's really, really dark, it's so clear that, in fact, you can see the galaxy, the, the Milky Way, if you wait long enough and for your eyes to adjust. One of the things that we used to do when we go to church camp in Melbourne, we go to really far away places where we're away from the city, and, and we, we lay, out, lay ourselves down in the field outside at night at about 1 a.m., 2 a.m., just to stargaze. It's amazing. And you see that, wow, this lights that's up there is so far, but I still want to relate to it. I think there is an inbuilt mechanism in all human beings that because our God is relational, we are relational. How many of you know where is Pulau Ujong? 
Pulau Ujong is an island that belongs to Singapore. How many of you know where is Pulau Ujong? We know Pulau Ubin, we know St. John Island, we know Pulau Blakan Mati, which is Sentosa. Do you know where Pulau Ujong is? Don't Google. Pulau Ujong. <laughs> it is amazing. Uh, this is actually a puzzle, a thousand piece puzzle that is uh, sold in Australia. It actually described the place where it's showing in the puzzle as Pulau Ujong, Singapore. Singapore, this mainland, actually is called Pulau Ujong. This is the place that before we call it Singapore as a republic, it's a conceptual thing, but the actual physical name of this land that we are on is called Pulau Ujong. Something new. Well, I learned that not because I am a puzzle kind of guy. In fact, I, I don't think I can complete a puzzle of a thousand pieces at home. Uh, Lucas will end up eating maybe 20 to 200 pieces of that puzzle. So it's not something I can do right now. But my friend, uh, while he's in uh, quarantine, uh, not really, it's a, in a similar kind of like stay-home notice in the United States, him and the daughter was going through this thousand piece, not exactly the same one, but a thousand piece puzzle. And uh, this is him, almost done, almost done. But he was sharing online, I stole this picture off his Facebook, where it's just like all blue, you know, which part of it is, is supposed to go where. Now it's just, you know, just by trying consistently and testing, he's hopefully he'll be able to get it done before this uh, thing is over. Why did I share with you this puzzle piece? Because, you know, all of us, all of us together, when we come together as a church, can we reflect the puzzle? What do I mean by that? If you take any individual piece of the puzzle by itself, it's nothing. We can only see blue, yellow, orange, red. But the full picture of Pulau Ujong, Singapore, comes together when this whole puzzle, piece by piece, is not separated by itself, but is joined together in a joint that they don't even realize what the role they're supposed to play. But as more and more pieces are joined together, you start seeing a complete picture, a beautiful picture of Pulau Ujong. You know, God is relational. And so He is best reflected not in individual lives, but in the context of community. So if God's nature is so, how then can that be communicated to the church? We as people currently are still highly individualistic. In the church, it is still more about my personal relationship with God rather than how I relate to God through the covenantal community. You know, I love what John Tyson says in this quote. He says that by ourselves, we can only bring a, 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 a very small picture of God. I hear people in church tell me, you know, pastor, I'm trying to share with my friends about who Jesus is. But then I, what I hear, and I've been guilty of that, is we try to do it by ourselves. You know, we don't rope others in. Or some of us just, I want to share with my, my colleagues, I want to share with my friends, I want to share with my neighbors and relatives. You know, what do I do? I tell the pastor, pastor, why don't you go and tell them about Jesus? See, pastor, we, I love doing that. that. That's why I'm a pastor. It's my calling. But I cannot do it by myself. It is only when the whole community come together, when the church comes together, then can we flu, fully reflect the picture of God. It's when we relate with one another in a way that is different and unique to the world, then can we reflect the picture of God. I think it is inbuilt in humans to reflect God's glory. In fact, if you look at the various things that's been happening, of course, there have been some things that's been negative and unpleasant, but that's what the news is. The news don't like to mention normal things that are good. They like to mention the bad things more than the good. But then there's a lot of good things if you take time to notice that is happening because of this pandemic. People are coming together. They are supporting one another. They're loving one another in ways that is practical and essential. Something that's never happened before. In, even in Singapore, where people describe Singapore as a sterile country. What does that mean? 
I hope it was sterile in terms of virus and hygiene. We're good with that. But it, it was talking about Singapore as being very cold and emotionless. We don't express our love for our neighbours. We've lost the kampong spirit. But you know what? We think we've lost the kampong spirit, but the kampong spirit will never leave us. And so in times like this, the old kampong spirit has been revived and now Singaporeans are coming out together to stand in solidarity with who they are with, with people around them. They're showing care and concern to the dorm workers. Never before. They've not complained and talked about it ever before. Maybe because they're ignorant. Maybe they just didn't have time to care. But now that it, they realize there's such an issue, now that God has given them time because they're stuck at home, they want to care. They want to do something about it. And I think this is God using our circumstance to drive change for the better in our society. Let us go on and read. In such a community, individuals are not leveraging the network, the connection for their own good, but rather have devoted themselves to the well-being of one another and the betterment of the community in which they live. I see that happening. And I hope to see that happening even more. And all the more should the church, as God's body, reflect that attitude that we shouldn't just come here for our personal spirituality and personal growth alone. Of course, that is always encouraged, always good, but we come here to better the community as a whole, to connect with one another, to take notice of one another, to love one another, not judge and discriminate and put down one another. The church is called to come together, not just in worship of God in a singular, uni, uni sense, but in a bilateral back and forth way where it's not about me receiving something good when I come to the church, but it's about what can I give when I see the others. God is best reflected in the context of a community. In Matthew, tell me, Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. About the birth of Jesus. Before Jesus was born, the prediction about who this person, who this being will be in a prophecy, in a revelation that's given to the Father, to Joseph. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. And, uh, sorry, and, and yes, Joseph, correct. And so here it was an angel who came, most likely Gabriel, who came and spoke. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. This is a prophecy that's not new. It was the angel quoting from Isaiah and, and it was quoting a prophecy about Jesus. And the very first introduction of who Jesus is, is he is Emmanuel, which means God with us. From the get-go, Christianity was about solidarity. Not about just us standing in solidarity with one another. It was about God choosing to come down and stand in solidarity with humanity. That God who can choose, if He wants to, to remain distant and far away, to not care about this creation that He's created. But He didn't, he didn't choose that. He was in a covenant that He Himself chose to fulfill. That He chose to come down from heaven to be among us, to be in solidarity with humanity through Jesus, whose name is Emmanuel, God with us. You know, God stands in solidarity with us. He's chosen to do that. And as His church, as partaker of His grace and mercy, as people who have received His blessing, we are called to stand in solidarity with those around us. There are people around us at this time who need us. Most of us have more than what we need. Most of us are comfortable beyond the minimum line. But there are people out there who are struggling to keep afloat. They don't even have enough to feed the family. 
And, and some of us are like, I'm struggling with abundance. I can't maintain my lifestyle at the way it was before the pandemic. Some of us are struggling to maintain life in a normal, basic, human way. Stand in solidarity with those around you. Your God condescended. He descended to be among us, to be human. God choosing to be human is not too much, I believe, as the body of Christ to stand, step down, spend less, use less, deprive yourself of certain comfort so that you can give to those around you. You may say, Pastor, I'm stuck at home. I can't do much. I don't think that is true. I still think there are simple ways that we can act and simple things that we can do for those around us. In fact, if you look at essential service, um, the, the list of the essential services, I looked at it. Do you know it's okay to deliver things to the needy? In fact, the, the church, the conference is doing right that uh, at this very moment. They are working with our only Adventist restaurant in Singapore, Genesis, to deliver food to some of the old folks, uh, to feed them. And that is allowed. If you look for opportunities, you will find them. If you want to find ways that you can and you don't know how, talk to me. Contact me and I, I, will, I will discuss with you what we can do. Because there are some things that there's out there that needs you to, to help and only you have the skill set to do it. It could even just be being on a phone call with somebody who needs to talk. And they've been stuck at home and, and psychologically, mentally, emotionally, they're not doing well and just need somebody to chat. And not everybody wants to chat with James, but someone may want to chat with you. And maybe you are more trained to, to really be a good counselor to these people. And talk to me if you, if you are on the other spectrum and you need somebody to talk to. You need a counselor. I can link you up with somebody. I know there are a few who have made themselves available. So if you have that need, contact me. And I'll, I'll direct you to where you can find those, those needs. So hang in there, church. God is standing in solidarity with you. We are in His comfort and His presence. Let us stand in solidarity with the others. Amen. Let us pray to close this worship service. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness, for your kindness. But most importantly, Father, we thank you for choosing to come to earth, to stand in solidarity with humans. That Jesus came to live, to understand, to die, and to be resurrected. But then he's now also not just a resurrected, he is ascended in heaven in your right hand with power that is imbued to all of us through his spirit that we can, by your power, stand in solidarity with those around us. They have given to us. Help us, Father Lord, to see the needs of others. Help us, Lord, to gain wisdom from what we can do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, church. Join us again next week online.